Welcome back to the Crypto Bar channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now, Bitcoin is breaking out above critical short-term resistance as the Bitcoin price and RSI are still diverging. And on top of that, Ethereum is still potentially repeating history in the short term while the price is playing out a short-term bullish divergence. So I'll be talking about all of that and more later in the video. So definitely watch to the end. First of all, starting off on the daily Bitcoin chart, and right now the price of Bitcoin is still bouncing exactly from that area of support, which I've been talking about since all the way back down here. And that area of support is still sitting in between around 37.9K to around 38 and a half thousand. And as always, these areas of support are where the price of Bitcoin is most likely going to bounce at. And obviously that's exactly what we've seen over the last one week or so, pretty much a perfect bounce from that area of support. But at least as of right now, this bearish divergence on the daily Bitcoin chart is technically still active because we have not yet seen a breakout in the RSI above this descending line of resistance. And so basically, when we start to see those invalidation signals like a breakout in the RSI above that line right there or into new higher highs above this previous high, that can invalidate the previous bearish divergence. But as of right now, that has not yet happened, which means as of right now, this bearish divergence is technically still active. But what's also very interesting is if we're taking a look at the daily daily Bitcoin MACD, we are now potentially seeing a bullish cross in the daily Bitcoin MACD, but as of right now, this is not yet confirmed. And so basically, if this ends up confirming in the MACD, if this bullish cross confirms, that means we no longer really have a lot of bearish momentum in the short term, and instead we're looking neutral to bullish. But remember, while the bearish divergence is still technically active, we're not looking overly bullish. And so that's why I'm saying we're looking relatively neutral, at least in the short term here on the daily time frame. And if we're staying on the daily Bitcoin charts, taking a look at the DXY, also known as the US dollar index, obviously over the last one week or so, this has basically been consolidating sideways. And so with the DXY going sideways over the last one week or so, this has allowed for the price of Bitcoin to actually bounce back to the upside just in the short term. But if we begin to see more bullish price action in the DXY, like what we've seen over the last few weeks, then obviously that would be another bearish signal for Bitcoin and crypto, like what we've seen over the last few weeks. But obviously, Obviously, on the other hand, if we begin to see a reversal again in the DXY, a dump back to the downside, then like what we saw just here, just here, and just here, and many times before that, obviously, that is a bullish signal for Bitcoin and crypto if the DXY is bearish. But in the meantime, just in the immediate short term, once again, the DXY is basically going sideways. So right now, it does not really have a major effect on the price of Bitcoin because it's not really bullish or bearish just in the immediate short term. And as I talked about in my last video, obviously, we have now confirmed the breakout back above this important line right here, which was sitting at around 40.8K. And right now, we have now seen two daily candle closes above that line. And so once again, as I explained in more detail in my last video here on the channel, with that breakout back above that line right there, it means we're no longer looking overly bearish in the short term because we're no longer breaking below that line of support. We're back above that line and in this ascending parallel channel. But once again, while the bearish divergence is technically still active at the moment i would not necessarily expect a significant amount of bullish momentum in the short term and instead i expect a relatively neutral price action and if we're taking a look at the eight hour bitcoin chart obviously right now the price action and the rsi is still currently diverging but we have not yet confirmed this potential hidden bearish divergence because first of all, as we can see here on the 8-hour Bitcoin chart, we clearly have higher highs confirmed here in the 8-hour Bitcoin RSI. And at the moment, the price of Bitcoin is currently forming lower highs. But as of right now, this potential lower high is not yet confirmed in place in the price of Bitcoin because obviously we have not yet confirmed an actual rejection or pullback at all. And so for all we know, we could just be in the middle of a move to the upside. And obviously, if we continue higher above this previous high in the price, then if we see higher highs in the price and higher higher highs in the RSI, there's no divergence at all. And so this is why we need to confirm that lower high in place in the price of Bitcoin. Otherwise, at the moment, this potential hidden bearish divergence that is forming is not yet confirmed. But if we do end up seeing more confirmation, like for example, multiple red candle closes confirming here on the eight hour time frame, then in that case, if we confirm that lower high in place in the price action, then obviously a hidden bearish divergence usually plays out as a bearish trend continuation pattern. And in order to get rid of any chance of a hidden bearish divergence forming here, we need to see a confirmed breakout with candle closes back above this high, which is sitting at approximately 43.3k. 
And so obviously, if we break out above 43.3K with candle closes, then at that point, we can start to flip much more bullish again in the short term, especially in terms of the trend and momentum. Because at that point, if we're breaking out above this previous high, we're most likely going to see a breakout here in the RSI above this descending line of resistance, which is an invalidation signal for the bearish divergence. But once again, at least for now, because the bearish divergence is technically still active, at least for now, we're looking relatively neutral in the short term in terms of the trend here once again we have not really confirmed a massive bullish trend reversal at least not yet but what we have seen over the last one day here on the two hour time frame just in the immediate short term is a breakout above this area of resistance which was sitting in between around 41.7k going up towards around 42.2k and so obviously just in the immediate short term, only on the two hour time frame, this is technically a bullish price structure. Anytime where we're breaking out above resistance, obviously that is a bullish signal. And so right now I would expect support in this price range. So if we end up seeing a bit of a short term pullback, once again, I would expect support right now sitting in between around 41.7K to 42.2K. And obviously we only invalidate this breakout to the upside if we see a confirmed break back below around 41.7K. So obviously in that case, we could be flipping more bearish again in the short term. And in that scenario, if we actually break back below around 41.7K, then a potential price target to the downside would be sitting at around 39,500. Because here in the Bitcoin liquidation heat map, we don't currently have a lot of liquidity to the upside, but we do have a lot of liquidity starting at around 39,500 and especially going down towards around 39.3K. And now obviously just because we have liquidity there, it does not 100% guarantee that the price is definitely going to go towards those areas. But even though it is not guaranteed the price is going to go towards these lower areas, obviously these areas of liquidity often act as magnets for the price of Bitcoin, basically attracting Bitcoin towards these areas of liquidity. And we saw exactly that on the way up. Obviously, over the last few days, we had liquidity to the upside back when the price was sitting at around $40,000. As I discussed in the short term all the way back then, I said initially we have some liquidity at around forty and a half thousand, and a lot of liquidity sitting closer towards forty-two k, which the price of Bitcoin perfectly hit. And so now that we do not really have a lot of liquidity to the upside and we do have a decent amount of liquidity to the downside, once again, that would be a potential price level that I'll be watching if we first confirm a break back below around 41.7k. Because remember, right now we do have this area which could act as support. And while the price of Bitcoin is holding above this area on the chart, obviously the next short-term resistance would be these previous highs right here, which are sitting closer towards around 43.4K to 43.5K if you're looking at the actual candle week highs. But remember on the eight hour time frame, these eight hour candle closes right here are sitting closer towards around 43.3K. And so ideally, if we just see a breakout above around 43 and a half thousand, at that point, once again, we could flip much more bullish again and potentially expect a full recovery back up towards these local highs if we first confirm a breakout above around 43 and a half thousand. But at least over the next one day or so, I expect relatively boring price action, nothing too crazy because over the weekend, we have lower trading volumes and also the spot Bitcoin ETFs do not trade on the weekends. And so due to that, once again, I do not expect anything too crazy on the weekend, but perhaps when Monday comes around, when the US stock market opens up again and the spot Bitcoin ETFs begin trading again, obviously, depending on inflows and outflows from the Grayscale ETF or the BlackRock ETF, for example, we could potentially see some major moves begin when the new week begins. And if you want to take advantage of that next major move in the price of Bitcoin or any other crypto, whether it's bullish or bearish, you can profit in either scenario with long positions and short positions. And personally, I take those trades over on Bybit, so I'll make sure to leave a link to Bybit in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link down below this video to make a Bybit account, you can get up to a $30,000 deposit bonus if you deposit on that account, but only if you use that link down below this video. But for whatever reason, if you cannot access Bybit or if you cannot KYC on Bybit, there is also Bitflex, which is another crypto exchange.
exchange similar to Bybit, but you don't need KYC for Bitflex. And so I will also make sure to leave a link to Bitflex in the description down below and in the pinned comment. And if you use that link to make a Bitflex account and deposit $100 worth of crypto and to make one trade over on Bitflex, then you can get 10 USDT completely for free along with other deposit bonuses. And so if you're trading crypto anyway, or if you're preparing to take the next trade, you might as well get set up or ready to go on one of those exchanges using those links down below this video if you want to get those extra bonuses. But anyway, now getting into the Ethereum part of this video, this is on the daily time frame, and right now, the bearish divergence is technically still active, which once again means we should not really be expecting a significant amount of bullish momentum, at least in the short term. But if we're also taking a look at the daily Ethereum MACD, as I talked about in my last video, this is telling us that we're seeing reduced bearish momentum in the short term, so not as much bearish momentum. And so overall, we're looking relatively neutral in the short term. We should not really be expecting a significant amount of momentum really to either direction. Because obviously, since all the way back up here, I've been talking about the bearish divergence and a lot of bearish momentum showing up here in the MACD since well above 2.5k. But at this point, obviously, we're bouncing from significant support and the MACD is declining in bearish momentum. And so I would not be surprised if we see a bit of a break from all of that bearish price action, possibly in the form of some sort of sideways consolidation or a very slight bounce as the most likely scenarios at the moment. And if we're taking a look at the shorter term, looking at the four hour time frame, obviously, as I talked about in my last video, this short term fractal is still potentially repeating history because not only is the price bouncing from this exact area of support, which I've been talking about basically every day since all the way back here. Obviously, once again, that area of support is sitting in between around 2170 to 2.2k. And not only are we bouncing from that area of support, obviously, we saw two major bounces from that area of support. And then this higher low, very similar to what we saw just here, two major bounces from this area of support, kind of in a sideways consolidation, similar to what we saw here. And then obviously, we saw that slightly higher low compared to this previous low, very similar to what we saw just here. And now, obviously, it's not a 100% perfect copy, but it's very similar price structure. And obviously, if you're looking at the RSI, this is trending back to the upside, forming higher lows and higher highs on the four-hour time frame, similar to what we saw just here. And so obviously, if this fractal continues to play out, then obviously this does suggest potentially some more bullish price action moving forward over the coming days or potentially over the next week or so. But once again, the main thing that could really cancel that bullish scenario in the short term is if we continue to see a lot more outflows from Grayscale, causing a lot more selling pressure for Bitcoin, which can actually drag down the overall crypto market. And so as always, I'll keep you up to date on those Bitcoin ETFs when they begin trading again on Monday. But at the moment, over the weekends, they are not trading, which is allowing the crypto market to see a slight recovery. And not only is the price bouncing from this area of support, obviously, we're also playing out that short term bullish divergence, which I've been talking about since all the way back down here, here on the two hour time frame. And as of right now, we have not yet invalidated this previous bullish divergence because as of right now, we have not confirmed any new lower low in the price or in the RSI. We're still trending to the upside in both the price and the RSI just on the two hour time frame here. And so once again, because this bullish divergence is still active just on the two hour time frame, this means just in the immediate short term, we're due to see either a slight bullish relief or some choppy sideways price action as the most likely scenarios from this bullish divergence. And so as I just said, because those ETFs are not trading and because we have a reduced volume on the weekends, obviously over the next one day or so to finish off the weekend, we could potentially see a little bit more of a consolidation or possibly a slight relief, very similar price action to what we've seen over the last few days is what I'm expecting over the next one day. And if we're taking a quick look at the price of Solana on the eight hour time frame, right now the price of Solana is contacting this area of resistance, which is sitting at around 98 to $99. And above that, we have more resistance at around $102.50. And above that, we have more resistance at around 108 to $109. And so obviously those levels of resistance are the most likely places where we could see rejections from. And obviously we did see a slight struggle in the short term around this previous previous level of resistance, which was sitting at around $91 to $92. But obviously, since then, we have surpassed that level. And so at this stage, technically speaking, we have not yet confirmed a bullish trend reversal, because at least for now, if you're looking at the highs and the lows, as of right now, we're still technically within a lower high, lower low price structure. 
and we also potentially have a hidden bearish divergence forming here with lower highs in the price and higher highs here in the RSI but as of right now that potential hidden bearish divergence even though it's forming it is not yet confirmed because obviously if this bullish move continues further to the upside above these previous highs so above around $103 then in that case that would create a higher high in the price and if we have higher highs in the price and higher highs in the RSI there's no divergence at all and so basically in order to actually confirm this hidden bearish divergence we first need to see some sort of rejection from this resistance at around $99 and now if we actually break out above $99 and head up towards around $102 to $103 and then see some sort of rejection, obviously we could potentially see an inverse head and shoulders pattern because right here we have a left shoulder and a potential head and all we need to see now is a rejection from around $102 to $103 to form a right shoulder and then in that case obviously if we form that right shoulder and then break out above that resistance at around $103 then that would be very bullish for the price setting up a bullish price target and so obviously in that scenario if we start breaking out above these previous highs especially if we first form a right shoulder that is when I'll flip much more bullish again here in the short term and as for short-term support, obviously we do have short-term support right here at around $91 to $92. And below that, we also have support right here sitting in between around $83.50 to $85.50. And if you want to know how you can profit from all of these moves in the price of any crypto, whether we're bullish, bearish, or simply chopping around sideways, you can profit from all of that price action by watching these videos popping up right here on your screen. The video in the top left shows you how you can profit from bullish or bearish price action using long positions and short positions and the video in the bottom left shows you how you can easily profit from choppy sideways price action but anyway that is everything that i have to say for today i really hope you enjoyed and i'll see you all in the next video